Welcome to our new video on the Z21. Today's video is about the Black Z21 and what else it can do. Later in the video we'll look at the 10808, our CAN bus capable occupancy sensor and the CAN hub. What can it do? What is it? But first, let's take a look at the connections of the Black Z21 and what else this control center has and can do. To see the differences between the black and white Z21, let's take a look at the white Z21. From the front, both look more or less the same. There are two X bus connections for the multi mouse. You can connect two mice directly to both the black and the white one. But the back is where you can see the differences. Here on the right side is the connection for the power supply. This is the same for both because power has to be fed into the device to supply power to the track. Then we have the first connection on the white Z21, the track out, meaning the track output. The black Z21 shows main track, meaning the main track output. Here we also have a so-called programming track output. What does that mean? Up here I only have one track output. As already shown in the previous videos, if you want to program, you have to switch between the main track and the programming track or remove all vehicles from the system. With the Black Z21, you have the major advantage of a separate programming track. This means that you can disconnect a track section from both poles using insulating connectors. The programming track connection then has to be connected to this track, for example the siding at the edge of the system. If you want to program the locomotive, simply drive over this separation point. As soon as you enter the programming menu, the main track output is switched off and only the programming output is supplied with voltage. This means you can program the vehicle without having to remove it from the system. There is also a what we call a sniffer bus next to it, a second control center, an old control center, can be connected using the sniffer bus. If, for example, you have an old Fleischmann twin center that you want to keep using or another digital control center, you can connect the track output from the old control center here. The data from the old control center is then transmitted to the Z21 and you can keep using the manual controllers from the twin center. This means that the control center is not completely useless, but can still be used in part. Next, you can see the B bus, which is the same for both and is the Roco and Fleischmann booster output. Then we have the R bus. This is the Roco and Fleischmann feedback bus for the feedback message. The Black Z21 also has the L bus, the LocoNet. The largest LocoNet distributor is Eulenbrock. Basically, that means that you can also use all Eulenbrock devices and all LocoNet compatible hand controllers, feedback modules, and so on with the Z21. Next, we have another X bus. Here you can connect another mouse or another X bus consumer. The LAN output is available again on both to connect the router for LAN communication, the WLAN router, so to say to control the whole system with our WLAN mouse and the Z21 app. Now we have the CAN bus and what else can the Black Z21 do? It has the CAN bus, which is also a feedback bus like the R bus, but it is Railcom feedback capable. What does that mean? Locomotive data can be sent from the decoder back to the control center, meaning you have more information that the occupancy sensor can evaluate. You can see what you can do with it in this video. I am using our occupancy sensor, 10819, again to show the advantages of the CAN bus. We recently noticed that it shows that something is there, but it doesn't know what. It says that there's a vehicle in that section, but it doesn't know which one. For a direct comparison, I plugged in the 10819 and now I'm switching to the 10808. The 10808 has both connection options. It can be used with both the R bus and the CAN bus. This means that we just connect it using the R bus and see what happens. 
Then we connect it using the CAN bus and see if there's a difference. So now I've connected the 10808 to the R bus. It works and you can see from the LED display that input 1 is occupied. Input 1 is also the occupancy sensor in my app. The occupancy sensor is working. But I don't see any benefit yet. You can see that now with the CAN bus. The CAN bus cable is basically like a LAN cable. In other words, if you want to use a longer or shorter one, you can also use a different LAN cable. Now remove the R bus, plug in the CAN bus cable, and of course do the same on the Z21. To do this, remove the R bus cable here too, because you don't need it anymore. And plug the CAN bus cable into the CAN bus. We often get the question of whether you can still use the R bus if you use the CAN bus. Yes, you can operate both bus systems at the same time. As I said before, you can only connect a maximum of 10 16-fold occupancy sensors using the R bus, meaning you can monitor a maximum of 160 sections. Once you have reached the end of the capacity of the R bus, you can continue with the CAN bus. You can connect up to 255 modules there, so you can monitor up to 2040 sections. This can be used for more extensive home systems. Now you have to call up the occupancy sensor, and you'll see that the R bus occupancy sensor is still in use. You can now reconfigure this by specifying that the 10808 CAN bus occupancy sensor is connected. Here we can already see that it has detected the locomotive with address 18 and also shows us the locomotive image. Now we have to save this. If you now go to the driving menu, you will see the locomotive with address 18. This is also displayed in the section. If you drive out of the section, the feedback message also goes out. When you drive back into the block, you get the feedback message again and you not only know that there is a vehicle in this section, but also which one. In fact it displays exactly the image that is stored in the locomotive library in the app. We get the question a lot of how to reprogram the occupancy sensor. If this is the first occupancy sensor or the second, third, fourth one, how do I reprogram it? It's actually pretty simple. Press the programming button again until the white LED flashes. Then switch to turnout mode with the mouse and enter the turnout address for the next feedback message address. For example 2. Then the turnout has to be switched once, the white LED goes on and reprogramming of the occupancy sensor is complete. You can test whether this has worked, because another advantage of the CAN bus is that the occupancy sensors don't have to be sorted in ascending order. This is because you can also leave out occupancy sensor 1 and only connect number 2. Let's look now to see if the programming has worked. To do this, we go back to the signal box, tap on the occupancy sensor and enter that it is occupancy sensor 2 and input 1. If you drive into the section now, you will see the feedback message. So, it's working, just press the programming button, switch the turnout with the corresponding address and then the occupancy sensor is programmed to the next address. Another advantage of the CAN bus is that there is a so-called CAN hub. This means that you can connect 20 modules directly. Then the power of the CAN bus is used up. With the CAN hub and a power supply, you have a kind of bus amplifier to connect more modules. You can connect 45 more modules to the CAN hub. 
you can also use the CAN hub to wire the system in a star shape. If, for example, you have a large system with a control center in the middle and you want to distribute the occupancy sensor to the left and right, then this is not possible with the UB bus since I have to connect the occupancy sensors one after the other. But with the CAN hub, you can go into the control center and you have several outputs with flexible wiring to the right, to the left and to the center of the system. This makes wiring much easier and more flexible than with the R bus. You can also see the Z CAN here, which is basically the amplified CAN bus output where you can connect additional boosters. A maximum of seven boosters can be connected to the booster output, but many more can be connected using the CAN bus. We have already tested up to 30 with no problems. That's all I have to say about the Black Z21 and CAN bus. As you can see, the CAN bus has a number of advantages, such as locomotive detection and the display of which vehicle is in which section or the star-shaped wiring and the fact that you can connect many more occupancy sensors and boosters. This means the CAN bus is also well suited for large systems. Another quick note, the decoder must of course support Railcom feedback. Most decoders currently do, but not all of them. Especially if you have 20-year-old sound locomotives from the early days, which were generally not yet capable of Railcom feedback. Then you can use the Railcom feedback unit, but you will not have a display. This is because if the decoder does not speak the language and does not communicate with the control center, so the control center cannot display the information from the decoder either. Thanks for watching. See you next time.